Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to DIY Geek YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to take you to the most important settings between Zimbra and Proxmox Mail Gateway to help you see how uh, Proxmox Mail Gateway right here would interact with Zimbra as the mail server so that it can help out each other. So Proxmox Mail Gateway will filter your incoming email and also uh, help you uh, get a more secure, better outgoing email out when you're sending email out. So, all right, so let's say first start with uh, Zimbra. And uh, Zimbra is a very popular mail server and um, by itself is very capable. It has uh, anti-spam um, and all kinds of different features by itself, but being coupled with uh, Proxmox Mail Gateway, which has better interface and better rule sets for just the mail security part, both incoming and outgoing, both of those combined together makes a very powerful package. This is the reason why I'm using both of them combined together. And this is the reason why this video will be very useful. All right, so first I'm gonna describe from the firewall part. So in I'm assuming that you already have your Zimbra uh, completely set up and you already have it on a particular uh, IP address internally. Now, my setup is that I have the Zimbra server behind a network firewall. So meaning all the address that goes to my Zimbra server are actually translated. So they are network address translated, which means that my Zimbra server is actually on this particular IP address here. So if you uh, would ping my um, Zimbra server, uh, which is basically at, let me uh, create a new, um, sorry about this, hang on a second. So if you would just ping my mail server, which is zimbra1.datafeedfile.com, it will translate to the address 3887.168.62, which is this particular address right here. Now, here I will show you how my firewall is configured so that these are all the different ports that is allowed for this IP address. So externally, this is the IP address, public IP address right here, which translate to this uh, host name right here. And these are all the different ports that is required, 25, 465, 443, 80, 587, 993, 995. Okay, one thing that you need to note is these first two right here are SMTPs. And these are not going to the Zimbra server, which is the Zimbra server that I have is at port 29, I'm sorry, port 49 right here, okay? So these uh, first two is going to the PMG, the Proxmox Mail Gateway. These uh, last, whatever, six, one, two, three, four, five, sorry, five rules are all Zimbra, 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 Zimbra. Okay, they're all going to the last uh, digits here is 49. Okay, so there, these are all going to the Zimbra server right here. All right, so only the SMTPs, which are uh, going to be used for receiving and sending email, are actually going to the Proxmox mail gateway. And this is for the incoming, by the way. So from the internet to port 25 is going to go to server.48. Uh, but HTTPS, HTTP, and everything else, submission, IMAP, POP3, are all going to uh, server.49, which is the Zimbra directly. So that's how my firewall is set up. Another thing that you need to also make sure if your server is like, like mine behind a network address translation is that you need to make sure that each one of the server, when it's communicating outside, when it's making requests outside to make sure that outbound, it will also be broadcasting as traffic coming in from the same IP address which is 3887.168.62. This makes sure, this makes sure that 
in and out, you're both using the same IP address, which will be checked by a lot of spam filters, etc., to make sure that the both your host name and your IP address are all both matching. Very important. All right. So next thing that you want to um, set is in the Proxmox mail gateway. This tab right here is one of the most important tab right here, mail proxy. All right, so you will first start with the first tab under mail proxy, which is relaying. Um, I believe these are all defaults. Um, I didn't change anything here, and uh, it's just going to stay the way it is because our relay port is port 25. Um, next is the relay domain. Make sure that you are listing one of the domain that you would like to receive and send email for is listed here. Next is the port, and these are default for Proxmox Mail Gateway. I'll leave it at 25 and 26. And uh, again, these are mainly default, but I did send, I, I did set this particular uh, field here uh, to these values here. Um, I found these values uh, at the, I think Proxmox Forum. There's many people that is recommending not putting too much block sites, but uh, these and this particular trash hole has been working with uh, for me really well. So you may want to copy these two the same way. And uh, also make sure that you are setting um, the SPF to yes. And everything else I think is default. All right, the next thing to do is to make sure that transport is pointing to your Zimbra server. So again, if there is an incoming email arriving in our SMTP protocol, it will forward it to um, our um, internal Zimbra server, which is at this particular IP address. Next is the trusted network. Uh, again, this is to allow Zimbra to actually relay email outgoing from our trusted network, which is here I'm using the whole entire 10.0. everything slash eight network to allow. Next is the TLS. All right, so this is for uh, in order, I believe this is for IMAP. IMAP will communicate through TLS and we allowing it and we are allowing it to receive the header also. Next is DKIM. Well, this is pretty complicated, but um, basically um, you would set a selector here, set this to yes, and set this to yes, and you would need to get the um, DKIM value, which is there is a bug right now with Proxmox Mail Gateway. Whoops, I keep pressing something that makes that go away. All right, this one right here. All right, so you would need to get the public key value from executing this command right here, which will allow you to read your public key from this particular path and file name. And with that public key, you'll be able to set your DKIM in your DNS record as a TXT record. You will put your selector here with the dot and the domain key as the name. So that's the name right there. And then this is the value right here, DKIM version one, hash SSH256 type of RSA. And then this is the public key right here, which is matching what we are um, specifying right here in the public key from this particular file here. So do not get the value from Proxmox from clicking this button right here. It will not work. There's a bug and uh, getting it directly from the file will work. All right, so now your email is coming through Proxmox Mail Gateway into Zimbra and uh, sending the email out um, will be supported through this network. And as long as your port is at port 26, I'm gonna show you how to set Zimbra so that it will send outgoing email to port 26. It is located right here in configure and you go to global settings 
and then you go to MTA. All right, so under MTA, relay MTA, external delivery, make sure you set that to PMG. Well, this is the host name uh, internally for my server, and uh, that's set to port 26, um, which is the same port here in Proxmox, port 26 is their internal SMTP. Another thing that you have to remember is to make sure that your firewall can actually resolve DNS internally, which means that when Zimbra is looking for this particular host name internally, when it does a ping from the Zimbra server, it should give the internal server address, which is 10.0.20.48 for me uh, internally. So I'll show you how to do this on PFSense, but um, you need to figure out how to do it on your own on whatever firewall that you use. These are the records uh, or the screenshot of some portion of the uh, page on my firewall. I cannot show you the whole firewall configuration for security purposes. But um, inside my PFSense DNS resolver, I do have these records as host overrides, which means that if somebody is looking for a PMG or basically doing a resolve request to the firewall, so my firewall is, by the way, you being used as a DNS resolver as the first position uh, on the DNS resolve. And if there was a request for pmg.datafeedfile.com, it will immediately re return this IP address internally. Same thing from uh, if somebody's looking for zimbra.datafeedfile.com. Sorry, I accidentally click on that. Okay, next I'm gonna show you a few more settings on the uh, Proxmox Mail Gateway so that you can achieve a 10 out of 10 outgoing uh, email server score when you're sending out email. All right, so here in the options, um, we already went through the uh, block site. There's really no other settings other than SPF. And uh, we also went through DKIM. Make sure that you set the DKIM. Um, and I'm going to switch over to the DNS record here. I'm gonna show you uh, the requirements here on the um, how to get 10 out of 10. There are two sections that is most important, which is the spam assassin and whether you are authenticated to send out email as that domain. So here in spam assassin, there are two things, DKIM and SPF. If you set those, you're gonna get a positive score and uh, you're gonna get 10 out of 10. All right, so DKIM is basically this particular setting right here. So you need to have a TXT record with this particular name, PMG2023, which is the same selector that you select here, inside mail proxy DKIM. This is a selector and I already showed you um, how to get the value of the public key, this value right here, which is the value that you will put inside your DNS record right here. Okay, so this is pretty standard, um, basically, this first part right here is version one DKIM. Hash is using SHA-256 and the type is RSA. So if you set that, and then you also have your SPF set correctly, my SPF is right here. Again, it's a TXT record. The name is app sign, just basically app host. The host is at basically. And SPF version one, including MX, the IP address of my server, which is the same IP address of this particular host name. And then I also include, so I include Zimbra, which is my Zimbra server. I also include my uh, PMG, my Proxmox Mail Gateway server, which is both this, this and this is all both resolving to the same IP address, which is this right here. And anything else that you may need to include as part of your SPF. I do use MailJet, so I, I'm including MailJet SPF as part of that. And I'm also including um, 
I forgot what this is for actually. There's another service that I ha that I'm using for outgoing email. I think it may have been Amazon. I'm not sure. Anyway, so I'm also including that as part of my SPF, and then don't forget the tilde all behind it. All right. So if you have that, you will get an SPF pass, which means that this particular section with both DKIM and SPF set, you are going to get a positive score. Next, to make sure that uh, again under this authentication, you want to make sure that your SPF is set. And then there's one more setting that you need to pay attention to, which is the DMARC. All right, so the DMARC setting is very easy. So you just need to have another TXT record with the name underscore DMARC and the value DMARC version one semicolon P, uh, which is mode basically. The mode is to quarantine. So basically, when it says if the SPF is set to strict and SPF is not qualified, it will quarantine. Basically, quarantine means that your email will go to your spam folder instead of being reject. Another setting other than quarantine that you can set here is actually reject. So if you set this to reject, it will actually return the email back when the SPF doesn't match. So I have set mine to the ultimate, well, not the ultimate, but almost as secure as possible, which means that I'm requesting for the sender to check for SPF being strict. That's what S stands for right here, is strict. And then the DKIM also as strict. If any of these fails, it will quarantine, which means that the email will be marked as spam. It will go to my junk mail folder, not rejected. Okay, so that's basically it. Um, if you set all that, you will get all these uh, settings here to be all green. And, and when you have it all green, other than my message, well, my message is just a test. It didn't like that. So um, other than that, which is minor, I still get a 10 out of 10 score, which is perfect. It's as high as you can get from mail tester, mail-tester.com. And uh, that is the goal that you want to do for your email incoming and outgoing server. If you have any questions, please put it in the comment below. I'll try to answer it the best I can. If uh, you like this video, please give it a thumbs up so other people can discover it. And if you like this kind of content, uh, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel to see more do-it-yourself videos like these and support my channel. Thank you.